you're enjoying Racing World, it's brought to you by Perspective Group. It's your global motorsport podcast show brought to you in conjunction with Race Control Magazine. Well, welcome back to another edition of Racing World from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the greatest spectacle in racing, as they call it, and I'm sure we'll see that next week. But right now, it's pole day, so we're down to the 12 that made it through after the first day of qualifying yesterday, and these 12 will shoot it out. The way it will work is the 12 will become 6, and the 6 becomes 1. The running order, slowest to fastest, so VK will go last in the 12, and uh, Sato will go first, and then when they get to the 6, same deal, slowest goes first, fastest goes last. So all the pressure, uh, well, it goes either way really, isn't it? So I think we're in for some great things. What do we know so far? There was a morning practice this morning. Dixon topped the timesheets there, uh, but the temperature was much, much cooler. Uh, a lot of shadow over the track then, and uh, it's changed very dramatically in an hour since that session happened and the temperature's come up. It was very cold here this morning, but it's now finally the sun's broken cover and the clouds have disappeared. So I think, come qualify which is still about 45 minutes away uh, we're going to see some quite different things but there's been plenty going on that's for sure for New Zealand motorsport fans I had the chance to catch up with Hunter McRae and Billy Fraser and you'll both see shows of them on our YouTube channel uh, and the links are in the description box below to find those these guys are both well su- worth supporting they're great talent of the future and um, both of them Hunter doing a fabulous job in Indy Lights and Billy doing a great job in USF 2000 so get them behind those and we'll try and catch up with Jacob Douglas as well in USF uh, next week when we visit visit them at Lucas Raceway Oil Park or IRP as it's referred to. So just recapping the practice that happened this morning under, as I said, quite colder conditions or cooler conditions and certainly a lot more shadow over the track, but a little bit windier at the time and that wind has disappeared. But it was Dixon that led the field, followed by Carpenter, VK, Sato, Johnson, Ericsson, O'Ward, Canaan, Palau, Power, Grosjean and Rosenquist. The only thing I can tell you is that Tika had a few issues with his car. They changed the steering wheel and put another steering wheel on. There seems to be an electronics issue. Went past the pit garage before and there seem to still be some quite concerned faces from both Honda and Ganassi in there. So we'll see how that one plays itself out come qualifying. Well, it seems to be the story of Indy 2022, the changing weather. In the space of an hour, it got warmer and warmer and warmer. The 12 cars took to the track over the four-lap average, and it was Dixon that topped the timesheet, and a phenomenal performance. And alongside that, it was Renus VK in the Ed Carpenter car, and Ed Carpenter himself making it into the six. And for Ganassi, it was all of their cars other than Jimmy Johnson, who'd had a huge moment coming out of one of the turns. Otherwise, he was likely to advance as well. So the first phase, done and dusted, an exit willpower, Jimmy Johnson, the two McLarens, and of course Sato, who'd been just blisteringly quick all week, but just really couldn't get it together over this really knockout phase of qualifying. So then onwards to the sixth, and as we'd said, the weather changed yet again. It started to get cooler. Now remember in the second phase, it's slowest car first to fastest car last. So VK, then Dixon were the two last cars to run. So things were going to get mighty interesting in the engine battle, Chevy versus Honda. In the end, Dixon took the top spot. He broke an all-time pole record speed of 233.718 miles an hour, which had been set by Scott Brayton in 1996. Ari Leindijk's all-time four-lap record of 236.9 miles an hour was set in 1996, but it came on the second day of qualifying so it wasn't actually eligible for a pole position. Ganassi earned its first 1-2 start since 2008 at the track where Dixon actually won the 500 and he was alongside his teammate the late Dan Weldon. For Ganassi it was a pretty amazing performance to get their, all their cars into the 12 and then four of them into the 6. Renus VK gave it heaps, Alex Palau gave it heaps but at the end of the day the consistency of Dixon over the four laps was the key to the story. He just was so consistent in car placement over four laps and this is what makes Scott Dixon a great threat when it comes to these sorts of things. So in the end it was Dixon that takes the top spot alongside teammate Alex Palau and then Renus VK rounding out that front row. That is an impressive front row, the fastest front row in the history of the Indy 500. There has never been a front row with average speeds quicker than this. So I think we're in for a blistering race. Of course, as we've said, the twist will be the weather because come Sunday, which is a week away, 
anything is possible for race day. It's rumoured to be warmer, so the cold settings that we saw when the Fast 6 finally happened may not favour those cars. But don't forget, we'll be in race trim, not qualifying trim. I had the chance to catch up with Dixon, though, at the post-qualifying press conference. Here's what he had to say. Questions here momentarily as well. Go ahead, David. Thanks, Dave. Well, I was wondering first whether it was going to be chicken or Taco Bell tonight, but clearly it's Taco Bell, so congratulations, Scott. Um, one of the things which Dave kind of alluded to, but I was wondering, with the way the weather was changing, because it was definitely getting cooler, certainly standing in the pit lane, was there a, the temptation to do things to the car between the run for the 12 and the run for the 6? Uh, I think, you, you know, we kind of always just try to man, you know, manage that and, and monitor it, to be honest, and, and you know, uh, there's... We have a program. I think we kind of follow, you know, with with uh, the, the current conditions, and it's been pretty spot on. I think all of us knew that, you know, from the first run to the second run, it was going to get easier, so you could be more aggressive. And um, you know, the first run we were we were already super aggressive, so you know, we didn't want to overstep it. And then we kind of just waited to see what the ten car did, and then trimmed out a little bit more than he did. Um, and that was it, you know. So uh, the this year, I think, has been tricky just because of the sealant and how black it is. So the the sunlight has really affected kind of qualifying more than than what we've had in the past. You know, I think this morning, especially when it was cloudy, you know, that that uh, keeping the track temp down really makes the car drive a lot nicer. And and uh, you know, as we got that later in the day, it helped. And then the the second part of that, waiting obviously to to be the last runner out on the track because of how you went through the twelve phase. Do you feel the pressure more by having to wait to the end or is it better to go maybe where Alex went or where Renus went? Uh, it kind of depends to, you know, you're kind of just seeing what the numbers are. Um, and when, when I saw the numbers that were run, I, I knew that, you know, uh, our first run, even though we had a big hiccup on the last lap, you know, really brought our average down quite a bit, you know, probably two or three tenths. So I knew we still had, you know, a, a pretty high 33 in the car uh, in, in that configuration and, and Knowing what Alex had done and you know what we were going to do, I think we, we we knew we had a pretty big number. It was just, it's just you're such on a on on such a fine line of of it being comfortable and nice to drive to it just completely taking off. You know, so it's a uh, huge credit to all the drivers. You know, the couple, last couple of days because you know everybody's taking big risks and and uh, the track is is really tough to read, and you know sometimes you nail it and sometimes you don't. So it's uh, it makes it uh, makes it fun when you get it right. Oh, well, congratulations to all three of you, and we really look forward to the race next week. Thanks, man. Wise words from Dixon. The track now effectively goes quiet other than a two-hour practice session on Monday for all 33 cars where they'll be in race spec, and then there is nothing until carb day on Friday, and then the race itself the following Sunday. So just before we wrap this up, the man I've probably forgotten about in all of this was the Phoenix, a.k.a. Roman Grosjean, making his first attempt at qualifying for the Indy 500, making the top 12 as well, and ultimately qualifying ninth. Grosjean, I think, could be a very, very dark horse on this race, and wouldn't that be an amazing story? So there's plenty to look forward to. Who will create history in the 106 running of the Indy 500? Only time will tell. Don't forget to check us out again on Racing World. Yeah.